Hi, Pascal here and in this video I will teach you how to create your own style using Color Finale and export it as a LUT so that you can use it in all of your videos. So I'm back in Germany right now, spending Christmas with my family and friends and drinking tea. <laughs> my mother actually um, gave me a, a tea calendar with 24 tea bags inside. So basically for every day before Christmas one and yeah, I don't really use it like a calendar, but I'm just drinking tea <laughs> and it's, it's just very good. Like every tea is better than the other one. So thumbs up here. So it probably sounds like a short holiday here, spending Christmas with my family and so on. It's actually isn't because I have a lot of work to do like you, you can see uh, most of the day I'm just sitting on my laptop here and working and of course one thing that I do a lot of a lot of the time is color correction for my videos because that's pretty time consuming and um, a few months ago I started creating my own looks and also exporting them as LUTs for my videos of course I don't only use my own looks I still use some looks or LUTs from Ryan Nangle and so on because I, I really like what he does there and yeah it just depends on how much time do I have for the video do I have enough time to create a specific look for that and also if I already think if I already have a good LUT for that or if I better want to create one by myself. So I would say let's get straight into it. I'm actually using Color Finale for that and it's also possible to use apps like Photoshop and so on to create LUTs and your, your own looks but this video is just about Color Finale. The reason why I don't use Photoshop to do that is simply because I'm using Affinity Photo and it's also possible to export LUTs there but I have the problem that when I import the LUTs in Final Cut using a plugin or Final Cut itself it just displays the colors wrong and I don't know why I didn't find a solution for that and that's why I use Color Finale. So yeah let's start with that. So there we are in Color Finale. Um, I prepared some clips already for clips here. That should be enough. And when you choose the clips, it's important that you have all the colors in your video inside those clips. Not in every clip, but at least in one of those clips, um, at least one color should be. So for example, I just have one clip here with skin tones. It's pretty important to have skin tones in your video. Then I also want to have blues in my video. Also greens, of course, and some more kind of orange um, colors. It's more like brown here, but it counts as orange. Here's the same, some drone shots with an intro of the speech. And I already uh, matched this clip, so I can shortly show you how I do that. Um, it's actually this clip here was good to show. Oh, no, this took too long. Let's just be a short example here. So um, what I do to create this look, I will actually remove the correction that I have now. So I do it like that. Um, at first I open the video scopes and you can see here um, how the lightning is, the exposure and the colors. And at first I want to bring it up a bit, slightly under 100 because everything over 100 will lose detail. We don't want that. And then I bring the midtones down here. Not too much. And then the master up again because now you see it all went down because here are actually a lot of midtones. Up again and bring the midtones down again. Not too far down. Master up again. Yeah, that's okay. And then a little bit more in the shadows. I would actually say I can do a bit more in the midtones. Yeah, master up again. And just a little punch in the shadows to make it a bit more contrasty. Easy. So here at the shadows, I don't want to go too close to zero. Because then we have we definitely have more details in the shadows. That's very important for me. Mm, the next thing then is to give it a bit of 
saturation not too much especially if you want to work with LUTs um, doesn't matter if you use your own LUT or um, LUTs from other people you shouldn't do too much saturation then like the LUT could be a bit too much um, what's very important here is that all of your footage looks the same like that clip should match with the other clips around so I got it here already easy that's just the basic correction you do at first with all of your clips and like this is another camera and this is uh, from the G85 AT5 not GH5 because it was still on Bali where I didn't have the GH5 and um, I would say that's okay of course it looks a bit more intense here the colors it's just a bigger sensor and yeah it was one of the mistakes that I did here to film in log like the D log is it's only good in some some cases like when it, it was kind of a flat lighting situation i shouldn't have used lock here it's better to use cine like but at this time it's um, around i don't know it's maybe four or five months ago um yeah and i didn't sort of that that much it was to figuring out everything so yeah and i would say those clips are match pretty good it's actually the panasonic cameras from their color profiles match pretty good out of the box with the DJI profile. So when you use a DJI drone and some Panasonic cameras in cine-like um, color profiles or lock, then it's already pretty good and you save a lot of time in post-production matching all the clips. So it was actually quite fast and easy to do that. So now when we did the basic color correction, I want to move all the clips over each other. Of course, in the reality, you would have a lot more clips. And that is totally fine, but I usually just pick four to six clips and then I bring them all in one image because then I can see um, how my changes affect every single clip because otherwise you do stuff that you don't like automatically. So to do that, you could create a new project or um, just copy all the four clips or six clips you want to have, copy them after that, and then you change the size of them to 50%. Bam! So, 50%, and we have a 4K video now. Um, let's just bring it to the left and right. No calculations here now, no complicated stuff. So, let's bring it to the left. Ah, also to the top, of course. Um, and what you can do then is you can just bring all the clips over each other. So now we have it like that. Yeah, I brought it a bit too much to the left, but that's okay. It's just so that you can see what you do. So the next step is that you insert a base grade. It automatically comes with color finale when you go to titles and under color grades, I think it's called. It's a bit short now. Um, let's see how the, yeah, color final, finale grades. There you will find that, and then you can apply. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, look grade. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but just to have the correct name here, I do the look grade, and then do that off. And then you can start putting in color finale here, and we can start grading. So the good thing here is right now that we have all the clips in one image so I can directly see what color change uh, or how, how every color change that I make affects the other clips. So let's start with that. Um, I'm usually starting with the blues. Depends a bit but I, I just um, like here in the blues you don't see that right now but there's a little bit of a purple tint in it. It's In, in this clip it's not that hard but um, in, in a lot of clips that I shoot where it's a, bit, a little bit more sky, you can see that really much. So um, I, I don't really like it. It's just a personal preference. But um, yeah, I usually try to change that as much as possible. So you can see that here when I um, add the six vectors into Color Finale and address the blues here, then I could change the complete sky. So it's also good to just um, go completely to the right or the left at first so that you actually see what parts of the images you change. 
And yeah, so let's introduce a little bit more teal to get rid of that purple. Now you can see that here. Like when I go in the middle again, it looks a bit more purplish than when I go to the right, of course. And I would say that is good. What I usually do with the skies, um, with the blues, is bring the luminosity a little bit down. Do that because it creates a nice contrast to the clouds. But I cannot do that too much because then I would get bending here in the transitions of the sky. That's also a reason why I do the same thing with the uh, baby blues. So you can see that it would actually look very nice to bring it completely down here. But that creates a lot of bending and yeah, that's not, not nice anymore. So I can also change the U a bit. It's important that you change the U of both um, blue tones here because if you don't do that, um, it's also more likely that you get banding. Because like um, when you see here, this, it mixed completely up with with a normal blue, with, with that kind of blue. So you definitely want to affect both. They are definitely affecting each other. Um, yeah, let's do it like that. That's okay. Always look also at... I was mostly watching in this clip now, but um, all the time you should watch for the others here too. Okay, that's good in my opinion. And the next thing that I want to address are the oranges. And it's not really orange here. We have the yellows and the blues. And you must know that the yellows also affects the greens. So, and, and of course, both also can affect the skin tones. So we need to be a bit more careful with that too. I would actually say, let's start with the reds. Let's see what we affect. It's here like the grass everywhere. Here it's not that much, just a little bit. And of course, the skin tones. And skin tones are pretty important. So we need to be careful here. Um, bring that back. And so I like if that looks a bit more red just a little bit not too much okay that's good in my opinion and also the the good thing with the luminosity in a color is also that it gives it like a bit more an intense look in the colors makes the colors more intense you can see here now it's a bit more flat because it's bright and if i bring it a bit down got darker and introduce a little bit more colors so more intensity I like that and yeah then let's go to the orange let's see again what we affect here it's like the same parts plus the greens and especially in this image we would affect a lot more so we need to be very careful here especially because of the skin tones also um, and I also want to make that warmer because of the greens. I, I like to have a more warm greens. Bali is a warm place and so I want to introduce more warm colors. But you cannot do too much here because the, uh, the yellow also affects the red here and if, if I would do too much here it easily looks too pink. That's not very nice. So just a very tiny bit adjustment here. Also, the skin tones are important, but as we can see here, the skin tones um, are still good. It's not that they look like aliens or so on. Well, that's perfect. And then, yeah, we were already talking about the greens, and I didn't affect the greens too much right now. So I want to change the greens a little bit more. And here I can see that I can do a lot with the greens without making the image actually looking crazy and but i still want to do too much like here you can see in the middle where, how it was before that especially in this image the greens were pretty blue here so let's punch in some some more warms in the greens yeah that looks good especially here you can see that very good that it matched those colors here it's nice yeah I don't really like the drone shots here, really messed it up, but yeah, sometimes you have no other option. And actually I wanted to have a bit more, more complicated footage to show that. So, so let's see what it does when we bring the greens a little bit down. I actually like that. So let's keep it like that, that's good. 
I would say then the colors are already pretty good now, especially I like that in this image. Of course, you cannot do too much with those other images here, simply because it's it's very flat. There was not so much light, and we don't have a big contrast in in the in the colors like here with that blue and the orange. Here is more like a bit more grayish skies, so and here is not much intensity because there was not much light. That really creates a difference here. It's actually shot on two different days, so it's better to just have footage from one day to make it match. But yeah, it's still good. So um, the next step then. Okay. So then the next step will be that we apply an S curve to it. Just to give it a bit more contrast, you looked for an S curve. We first apply the curves and then bring it down here, and the upper part up. That is already too much. Like you can clearly see when you go too far from each other with the curves, it lo just looks crazy. Uh, let's start from the beginning. So, sec. Mm. Yeah, I like to have a little bit more highlights here. Uh, probably a bit less. It's just my screen on other screens. It could easily look crazy when I introduce too much contrast. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that look. I, I don't want to introduce too much contrast here because then it would look like not, not realistic anymore. So right now I have a good contrast, but it's still it's kind of cinematic here. Um, it is okay. The cinematic bars are just missing. I just love the cinematic bars. Okay, um, yeah, so, so much to that. And then we created our look here. Of course, it was really simple what I did now. Normally I would spend a lot more time with that. Um, but just to show you, I mean, I, I cannot show you every look here because it's just a matter of what you like and about creativity and so on. So um, you really have to decide for yourself what kind of look you want to create. The most important things are really that you keep an eye of the skin tones, that the skin tones don't look um, unrealistic or something. Of course, only if you don't want them to look unrealistic. Let's say you really want someone to have a green body, then you can do that. But yeah, in most cases, you, you don't want that. So keep an eye for that. And yeah, the rest is just up to you. You can create every look you want. So I created this basic look now that I want to have for this videos. And you can actually do a lot of other stuff with that if you want to be creative. Like I, I still wanted to have this look right now a bit more natural. It's also a bit easier to show. But for example, um, what you can do, um, let's say you want to have it a bit like some colder in, in this part here. And you want to have those desaturated skies. Um, in, in a lot of videos he has that. And there's also the steel tea LUT from Ryan Nangle and so on you can use for that look. And if you want to create this look, then you could just affect the blues here, bring the saturation down. Then you um, add another one, bring the saturation down again. And so another one, bring the saturation down. You can see that, how it affects the skies. So even more, less saturation, one more. Less saturation. I can do one more. <laughs> so there we took a lot of saturation out of the blues. And when I switch all of that off now, then you can see how much blue disappears from that image. So that way you can really make crazy looks. Um, you can affect every color. You can add as much of vectors and color wheels here and so on. You can really do whatever you want and there are no limitations. I really like that about Color Finale. But yeah, I want. I just want to have this look and now as the look is ready, I want to export that as a LUT. So to do that, you can simply click on this little control wheel here. Go to export as LUT. Choose your folder, it's already there. I have my own LUT folder. Just created a 
custom AUT tutorial. Now I exported this, it as a LUT and yeah, I don't need all those clips anymore, but we can keep the look right. It's, I don't need to insert it again. So get rid of that. And then I expand the look right. Of course, I already have this, um, this LUT applied to all of that footage now. Actually say that this is not saturated enough, but yeah, it doesn't matter. No, of course, even when you applied the LUT, you can adjust the clips a bit. Like it's not perfect right now here with the colors, I would say, but that's not because of the LUT. It's because the clips here are not perfectly corrected. I can do a bit more with that. Um, but now it is not the LUT that, that I'm using. It's just um, still the color finale effect because I copied the look right or I, I just pulled it to here. And um, now you want to use the LUT because you can use the LUT in every video you do in the future. And that's the advantage of that. And to do that on Final Cut 1.4, you simply go to colors. It's called Farbe in German language. So you learn something new about some languages here today. And then you go to custom LUT. And then you can easily choose the LUT you created before. So I go to my LUTs and um, custom LUT tutorial. Bam, it's there. And yeah, if you, let's say for example, it's a little bit of pink here. You could also say that it shouldn't mix too much. So now it's a bit more natural. But yeah, I think that's okay. It's just warm and so on. That's good. So and when you applied that and set it up, it automatically applies to all of your clips. So let's turn it off. That's how it looked before. You can see that um, now you have a little, little bit more contrast here and that's because the S curve we created. And of course the colors change. In those clips here actually from the drone, the colors don't change too much. But I would say it's a lot better because when you see that before, like the greens are really not looking nice. There are no really blues in the skies and right now way better. It's not perfect right now. I would still do a lot more with that, but that would be too much for the tutorial right now. You don't want to spend your whole afternoon watching that, so keep it short here. And yeah, like even here, like you see the greens before and after it just looks a lot nicer, especially this clip. Yeah, that matches a lot better. So, so much for exporting the LUT and inserting into your footage. And of course, you cannot just apply that to those four clips that you made it for now. Those clips are just, um, are just um, representing all the clips you will have in your final video. Like right now, you have seen the intro in the video. And yeah, I will actually create the intro after I did the tutorial here. So I will um, insert some more clips here and then apply to LUT to the LUT to all of those clips. So yeah, just feel free to use your own created LUTs in all your videos, and then you will have a lot of fun and nice footage with that. So as you could see, it's actually pretty easy to create your own looks and export them as LUTs. Um, but of course, you need to be a bit creative for that. You need to have a good imagination of how your video should look later. And I would actually su suggest to watch some other videos or watch on Instagram some famous people for their looks and look what they do and then just base your look on that. Don't copy them or something, just look what you like and look in what direction you want to go for your video and then you get a better idea of what, what you need to do. Of course, in, in the beginning, it's a bit of playing around with things. You will see what works and when you overgrade something so that it actually doesn't look any good anymore because you have bending in the skies or so on, it happens pretty fast. It, also, I have some videos still online where it happens to me. It's overgrading, so it's all a bit um, of a learning process, but if you do that in every video, um, when, when you start with that over a few weeks, then you will learn that pretty fast. If you liked that video, then hit the subscribe button now so you will not miss any other videos in the future about my travels and also, of course, some more video tutorials. And I would then say, see you in the next video.